in German Air Force. <laughs> and uh, this is a German Air Force uh, F-84, uh, the way I flew it. Except I didn't fly it with white tanks, I had yellow tanks. We were known to fly as low and lower than the trees. And uh, of course the people didn't like that and uh, made a lot of noise. And so uh, they reported us. There was an airplane with a white tank or there was an airplane with a yellow tank, that was us. And, uh, and then we couldn't deny it. <laughs> there was, oh, we, we always said, no, there was Lechfeld, these guys here, with a white tank. And, uh, but, uh, so in any case, it was a, um, a very fantastic airplane. It, uh, it was uh, solid built by Republic. And uh, it uh, uh, even went through trees and flew. So, you know, the, some of the guys, like I said, we were playing real low. Some went through trees and came on all bent up. But the airplane was so sturdy, uh, you know, at least about the pilot. Um, and, uh, uh, well, you want me to tell a little war story on, uh, on my uh, F-84? Um, we, we, we trained at Loop. So we got about uh, well, 15, 20 hours or so at Loop Air Force Base, a uh, little, little bit of gunnery. And then, uh, uh, as I said, it didn't have a dual capability. So there was no flight stop with the airplane. You flew the airplane, period. And uh, nobody told you how to do it, except the instructor followed you in another airplane formation. So, uh, the, uh, uh, my f when, we, when I came back to Germany, um, we were reintroduced now to German flying. And in Germany, the weather is all. And for us beginners, uh, we had to be trained in order to really uh, uh, be good in weather. And uh, uh, later on, in, in, in particular the F-84, also in the 104 later on that I flew, I've landed the airplane several times in zero conditions. The radar controllers talked me down. He says, you have a touchdown now. I didn't see a thing. Cut swallow. Cut swallow. And you go, boom. And then you saw just a tad of a white stripe ahead of you, another tad of a white stripe ahead of you, so you could stay on the runway. But uh, uh, these radar controllers were so good. And uh, they really were our buddies. I mean, uh, we had to communicate with each other, and uh, they were awesome, uh, very particular in, in Germany. <coughs> so uh, uh, here is my first uh, night flight in an F-84F. Uh, this is Captain Stoll that uh, uh, was uh, doing the training for us new guys. He says, well, weather's halfway decent, we have 1,000 feet. Uh, why don't you go up and um, uh, do your night flight tonight? Thousand feet. No time in the airplane? No. Okay, yeah, go. And so uh, we took off. Uh, we were three new students, so we took off uh, about uh, five minutes apart. And uh, I was, I think, with the last one. And uh, getting the clouds, and climbed up to, uh, I was supposed to climb to 28,000 feet, and I come out of 20,000 feet. It's the most gorgeous canyon of silver clouds. I uh, just walk out and the ah, moon was shining and was reflecting on the, on the clouds. Ah, awesome! Look at that cloud. Wow! Oh, you better check your hair <laughs> So I, uh, I, I looked at the um, uh, gauges. Hydraulic, number one, gauge zero. Number two was fluctuating. And this airplane doesn't have wires to go to the controls. It had only hydraulic lines. So, and it was going like this. So, mayday, mayday, mayday. That means I have an emergency. Get me home as fast as you can. And uh, mind you, it's night. Okay? And I haven't flown that airplane at night. My first flight. So, they. Yeah, Bring me out, bring me down, and we had a uh, 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 an emergency.
nitrogency here down bottom. There was just nothing but nitrogen that was being blown into the hydraulic lights. So, but I first tried it like this, and the main gear came out, but the nose gear didn't. By that time, I was too close to the other way. I'm not going to have this happen. I mean, uh, emergency. I'm not going to have this happen. <laughs> With the nose gear, unsafe. <laughs> so, um, stupid. I mean, I should have landed with the nose uh, on the one way without the, the nose gear. And uh, so, went around, back in the clouds. And uh, while I was doing this very slow, I put some G-forces on the plane. And the nose gear. Back, flew back, guided me back down. I landed, no problem. Taxi then. The uh, maintenance guy comes up with the ladder. Lieutenant, uh, you have all your hydraulic fluid in the left wing, and you have about a, qu uh, a quarter of a quart left in your hydraulic system. So, okay, and there's a form called 781. You're, you're, if you fly, you don't know what that is, pretty soon. And uh, that's where you write down the problems you have. So and we, were, we had these backpack shoots, <coughs> and I uh, uh, <coughs> climbed out the airplane. And, uh, and it's, it's, it's a very high cockpit, as you can see. And you had a ladder here. And so um, I climbed out the cockpit and had my shoe on, and then I put my first foot on the uh, uh, ladder, and I put the other one in, and then I almost broke my neck. <laughs> my knees were that soft, uh, you know, after I had that uh, problem with the gear. And uh, so I almost did myself in climbing out of the airplane. <laughs> <laughs> what was the next airplane you flew? Okay. The, uh, we, I flew the F-84 in Germany for three years, and uh, had, 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 oh, I mean, had, the, the flying that we did was awesome. Uh, our gunnery, my inch horse, down in, in uh, Sicily, uh, in uh, Sardinia, in, in the Mediterranean, uh, Italy, and uh, so uh, we went uh, down there often and, uh, and shot and got bombs and all that stuff. And um, and uh, I must say. Uh, all of the air forces, uh, like the Dutch, the Belgians, uh, the, the Danish, the Norwegians, they all had uh, pretty much the same airplane, F-84, as you, as you saw the, the Dutch uh, air force. And uh, <coughs> um, these airplanes were given, there, there were Korean War airplanes, and uh, the Americans had a lot of those airplanes. In the meantime, they switched to the F-100, the newer airplane, and uh, uh, had these F-84s sitting around, and they sold them for one dollar to us, to the Germans, the Dutch, the Belgians, and so on. And so we flew the heck out of those machines. And uh, then um, the Soviets uh, came up with uh, MiG-21. Uh, initially, it was the, the MiG-15, you may, you may remember, MiG-17, MiG-19, and they were sort of equal to our airplanes. And then comes the MiG-21, the MiG-23, the MiG-29. We had not one airplane that would be able to counter those airplanes. So, uh, uh, they came up with the F-104. And the F-104 was an airplane flying twice as fast as the sound, Mark II. And uh, uh, it uh, 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 was very hard to be detected. We had six feet of wing on each side only. Very, very short, stubby wings. But it was fast. And uh, uh, what we found out later on after the, the uh, Iron Curtain came down, that uh, the radar that they had, had between each uh, stroke of it on the radar, the radar goes back and forth like this, uh, they had much more space. And the 104 would slip in there. <laughs> was they could see you, and they couldn't see you, could see you, couldn't see you. And so um, um, the uh, uh, 
guiding these uh, uh, airplanes or guiding us, so uh, they could get a missile at us. So it was extremely difficult for them. We would have known that didn't worry that much <laughs> because we know now we would have gone to all of the uh, uh, supply lines. I mean, they would have, the Russians would have made it to the right river and split Germany in half, but then it would not have um, uh, stayed there very long because we would have destroyed all of the supplies. And the Russians knew that. And uh, I think that's the reason why they uh, attacked, didn't attack us. And, uh, but we needed a faster airplane to counter these new jets that the Russians had. And uh, so the 104 came up and uh, uh, NATO decided to buy that airplane. So uh, the Italians flew it, uh, the uh, uh, Dutch, the Belgians, the uh, Danish, the Norwegians, the Germans, all flew the 104. And that really created, uh, did we have a picture of um, um, uh, Europe? Oh, we didn't have it, okay. Uh, and you can really see that uh, uh, the Soviets were really uh, encircled by the NATO countries. So it was extremely difficult for them to, uh, uh, to get us. And uh, we outsmarted them and had better equipment all the time. And uh, we finally uh, bankrupt them. And so uh, that's, uh, when the, that's when they said, OK, you can have East Germany back. <laughs> so we got each other back without finding one shot in the back. Okay, and uh, so we attributed also this to the F-104. Yeah, why don't you uh, why don't you show it how that airplane looked like? It's the most beautiful airplane ever built. That's me pre-flighting the the 104, looking at the tail after the That's the tip tank. The leading edge here is as sharp as a knife you could cut right with it. And as you see, it's only six feet from the fuselage to the tip tank. And here's the pitot tube. It had to be way out because of the Mark II capability. See, we, at this time, we flew still what we call the C2 seat with the backpack parachute. This year, this is at Luke Air Force Base, by the way, and this year uh, cooled the pilot down uh, in the summertime was way too hot. We had temperatures of uh, 145 degrees in the cockpit. Mm -hmm. Even though we had uh, air conditioned, we took the air conditioned uh, hose and put it in our flight suit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> But lethal, very lethal. Uh, it could shoot, uh, I mean, you could pinpoint it wherever you pointed the, uh, the pipa, you hit. It's a really, really good airplane. And they're checking the flaps. The flaps had a, an air that was blowing down here from here, so you could fly even slower. So it, it created lift for you. Or let's say it kept the lift on the wing. And these are the guys that did the last chance check before taking. This is Luke Air Force Base. These are the white tanks, uh, if you know what the white tanks look like. And this is the site. Uh, and usually there was a circle in the site, and that's what we used for aiming. And here it shows you the last pins, last chance. You check whether you had any fuel leaks, oil leaks, and then uh, we were ready for takeoff. And here you see underneath the uh, bomb dispenser, which was looked very similar to the uh, nuke bombs we, we, we carried most of the times later on uh, nukes, nuclear bombs. Here's the, the Gatling gun. Uh, 65 rounds a second, the machine gun shot. Flight. Again, loop by tanks. Dad, how did you fly and film at the same time? <laughs> I flew. Right <laughs> now, I flew in, in, in a uh, super eight millimeter. I flew with my knees. 
Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm sitting here, and uh, I had this. This is in this is in '67, '68, and uh, so uh, I didn't have those good, wonderful cameras that you had. It was a Super 8, and I had to hold it with about two hands. <laughs> So uh, all the pictures you see is uh, done with that. This is the range uh, in uh, uh, near Aco. You know where Aco is, right? In, in, in Arizona. And uh, uh, these were the circles and, and banners that we shot at. When we landed, the air, the airspeed of the airplane was so high, we had to use a drag chute. And that chute that you see right there is um, uh, slowed us down. And uh, when we had brake failure, sometimes that happens. Uh, we used to shoot definitely, but then it also had this airplane has a hook like the Navy does, and we had a barrier and it hooked it to the barrier and stopped it if you had brake failure. Or sometimes as we were stretched. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, but the wheels was too small, as you can see, and so the uh, brake energy could not dissipate as well. And so we often came home with, with glowing brakes and uh, the tires in this airplane, uh, if it got too hot, blew. So uh, we had to watch that. And so the shoot really helped. Here you can see the, the, the Luke Air Force Base with all the F-104s. Even though they had said US Air Force on it, they were German airplanes. They had to wear, or we had to wear the uh, US insignias because it was cheaper when the 104 fell on the farmer's soil, insurance price was cheaper <laughs> with US markings than with German markings. <laughs> <laughs> That's the only reason why we, why we have US markings. And here's that uh, dispenser again that looks exactly like the A bomb, but uh, the, the actual bombs that we threw out, the, the practice bomb, were only this big. And they had the same aerodynamics as the, the real bomb. The flat nose and uh, Give a little bit smoke. This is a, a rocket park. We shot the rockets. In those days, you may have heard the word uh, Mighty Mouse. And uh, these were the Mighty Mouse rockets that we uh, used. Uh, and so it, it, it was a lethal airplane. I mean, the weapons that we could drop and the bombs that we could drop uh, and uh, the nukes that we could drop were, were lethal. Now look at this guy's back. Look at the snake You see it? How wet they are? <laughs> see it? Oh. We sweat it in the <laughs> Big time. And uh, most of the missions were about an hour to an hour, ten minutes. But they were tense. And we were doing, we were fighting. And here, as you can see it real well, this is the debriefing. There was a guy from the engine, there was a guy from the airframe weaponry and then uh, in general. Here you can see a formation takeoff car in the two-seater. The F-104 uh, F, uh, had two-seaters also for training purposes. Were you flying? <laughs> Were you flying on this one too? <laughs> no, uh, this one uh, I uh, had the student fly. Flying at night, and uh, there, that, there was a night flight, and we just followed the sun as high as you go. You can still see the sun. And I tell you, flying that airplane was an absolute challenge. And uh, I consider myself very lucky to be able to fly this particular airplane. And like I said, in level flight, Mark II. Most of the airplanes, you had to go a little bit in a dive to get, get there fast. And uh, uh, should, do we have time for uh, uh, my first uh, Mark 1 flight? Yeah, one last story. F-84. My third flight, uh, you, you, you got two solo chase. You, you were solo pairing, right? So you got two solo chase, that means the... Uh, the um, uh, instructor chased you another airplane twice. And we did, you know, show the area, get familiar with the airplane. And then the third flight was a solo solo flight without instructor. 